Hi everyone! Nature is an amazing force that has been maintaining order and harmony on our planet for millions of years. Even the most insignificant element of nature has its meaning and purpose. Take, for example, rivers. They cross all existing continents and help people survive since prehistoric times. Rivers are a source of drinking water and food. Without them, it would be impossible to irrigate the land and carry people and goods from one settlement to another. Nevertheless, in order to live safely near deep rivers, we have to make certain interventions. For example, since ancient times, people were building dams on the waterways to adjust the flow of water. Today, we will tell you how the dams work and show you the terrifying consequences caused by mistakes in their design. Let's get it on! The main goal of building dams is, of course, prevention of floods. In some particularly humid regions of the world, the water level can rise following heavy rains, and this can result in catastrophic flooding. Dams are often built to create a water reservoir, which in turn can be used both for general purposes and for agricultural needs. After diverting the waterway, the water in the valley spills and forms a perfect reservoir for such purposes. Unfortunately, it often floods a large area around it. That is why it is so important to evacuate the local people before the construction of large dams. For example, at the beginning of this century, about 1.3 million Chinese were relocated to other cities because of the construction of the giant Three Gorges Dam. The reservoir formed by the waters of the Yangtze River flooded 13 cities, 140 towns, and 1,350 villages. And finally, another, and perhaps the most important goal of building dams in the 21st century, is the generation of power. The dams are built together with a hydroelectric power station, which captures the energy of falling water to generate electricity. Three, two, one. The dam has to be very high so that the difference in water level before and after the barrier is as large as possible. After reaching the dam, the collected water passes through the locks in its wall and falls down. It passes through the huge blades of hydraulic turbines, and those, in turn, power electric generators. Unstable or erosion-prone soil makes building a dam very dangerous. It increases the risks of dam failure. Silty ground or peatlands are unfit for dam construction, but people build dams there anyway, like the ones in the USA, China, and even Switzerland. And although specialists usually design an enhanced flood prevention system, flood risks are still real. What are the largest dams in the world and where can you find them? Let's find out. There are many dams in China, for example, the Chinese arch dam Jiawan, which is considered one of the highest in the world. Its height is 292 meters, and the construction cost the Chinese government $4 billion. Jiawan is located on the largest river in Southeast Asia, the Mekong. It flows across China, Cambodia, Thailand, Myanmar, Laos, and Vietnam. This waterway is used as a cargo and transportation route, and also provides electricity to about 60 million people in the Asian region. Despite its obvious benefits, the dam can also pose a serious danger to locals. Western experts have repeatedly expressed their concern about its reliability and predicted that if it bursts, human and agricultural losses could reach an incredible scale. This dam, like most of the large ones, is also part of the hydro power station. It's located in Tajikistan and supplies energy to more than 70% of its territory. The 300-meter dam at the Nurek hydro power plant was considered the highest in the world. However, in 2014, this title was taken by Jinping One Dam built in China. It's interesting that the construction of this giant dam was carried out by local specialists despite a particularly high seismological hazard. In other words, the risks of earthquakes in this area are so great that engineers faced a challenging task to build an extremely durable structure. It was supposed to withstand not only tremors, but also the consequences of the earthquake, like landslides and flooding. You are looking at one of the most famous sites on the outskirts of Las Vegas. Yes, this dam looks impressive enough to attract tourists from all over the world. They flock there every year.
mostly because it isn't like any other dam out there. Just look at the design turrets rising seamlessly from the dam's face. Hoover Dam stands in the downstream reaches of the Colorado River and is 221 meters high. The dam played a major role in the development of the American Southwest states in the 1930s. However, the construction resulted in many deaths. Some of the building works were carried out in the tunnels, where the workers suffered from carbon monoxide poisoning. This left many men physically disabled for the rest of their lives, and 96 of them died at the dam site. The next Grand Dam we'd like to tell you about is the Dariner Dam, one of the crucial elements of Turkey's plan for moving towards hydroelectric power. This power station built on the Kora River is the highest in the country. The construction budget was about $2 billion, and today it generates enough electricity to power 750,000 houses in Turkey. We've already talked about the dangers of using such huge dams. It could lead to a full-scale catastrophe. But what would happen if the dam failed? Unfortunately, it happened many times throughout the history of mankind. This hydroelectric power station on a small mountain river of Ajant in Italy was designed in the 1920s, but completed much later. The construction of the 262-meter-high dam was finished in 1957, and two years later, the filling of the reservoir began. This reservoir would later become the cause of deaths of 2,500 local people. The problems began because the construction site was located on the Monte Toc Mountain, infamous for its history of landslides. That was the reason the locals were against building the dam. but the local authorities didn't listen. It was much more important to them to turn their engineering masterpiece into reality and boast their post-war economic achievements to the world. By 1960, the water level in the reservoir reached 190 meters, all because of landslide debris that fell right into it. In autumn 1963, the water level reached critical values, 25 meters more and the dam would be overtopped. And that's exactly what happened on October 9th, 1963. About 160 million cubic meters of forest, earth, and rock fell into the reservoir. A huge wave resulting from the landslide swallowed Longarone and several villages, killing around 2,000 people as a result. It's a miracle that the dam itself wasn't damaged. Last January, the outskirts of Brumadino City in Brazil looked like a scene from a movie about the apocalypse. 12 million cubic meters of toxic mud accumulated in the iron ore mine were released right on the city and its citizens. 259 people died as a result, with 11 still reported as missing. But human losses are not the only consequences of this tragedy. It's already called the worst ecological disaster in the history of Brazil, because the entire ecosystem of the Paropaba River was completely destroyed. The worst thing is, multiple damage dams across the country pose danger to the locals and yet keep functioning. The Oroville Dam isn't just the highest dam in the USA, it also causes the most problems. The water level of the Feather River rapidly rises because of the copious amounts of rain that fall in California. Usually, the water simply pours down through special mechanisms to generate electricity, but sometimes there isn't enough capacity in the station. In 2017, local authorities had to urgently evacuate 130,000 citizens of Northern California because of alarmingly high water levels in the reservoir that was created as a result of the dam construction. Luckily, special managed to avoid the disaster thanks to a system of emergency water discharge. But if the government doesn't improve the dam, the next flood might be catastrophic. The Sionoshushinskaya power station accident became the biggest man-made disaster in modern Russian history. It happened in 2009 and cost 75 people their lives. Some critics believe that the reason behind the tragedy lies in the mistakes the Soviet engineers made in the 1970s when they designed the dam. Eleven years ago, thousands of cubic meters of water damaged the bigger part of the station, which only resumed its work in 2014. About 40 tons of transformer oil was released into the Yenisei River, which killed about 400 tons of cultivated trout. You can see why some people have compared this disaster to the infamous Chernobyl catastrophe. Could the same tragedy happen today? Engineers claim we are safe, as 40 billion rubles were allocated for repairing and improving the power station. Given the proper maintenance, it can serve for another 100 years. That's it for today. See you soon!